हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल दिस इज अनदर वीडियो ऑन स्टैटिक टाइम एनालिसिस इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चंस एंड आंसर सीरीज इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू आस्क यू सम कॉमनली आस्क्ड इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चंस रिगार्डिंग स्टैटिक टाइम एनालिसिस एंड पर्टिकुलरली आई एम गोइंग टू कवर कंस्ट्रेनिंग मल्टीप्लेक्सर क्लॉक आउटपुट्स एंड नाउ दैट आर वेस्टिंग मच टाइम लेट अस गेट स्टार्टेड एंड सी व्हाट आर द चैलेंजेस दैट पीपल आर आस्किंग friends the first challenge is on your screen where we have two clock inputs clock 0 and clock 1 both are going to the input of the multiplexer and with the help of this multiplexer we will be able to pass only one of the clock at its output it can be either clock 0 or it can be clock 1 and the same clock goes to the entire design and now the question here is how will you constrain the input clocks and the output of the multiplexer here you can pause my video here try to think of its answer if something comes to your mind please write down in the comment section so that we can start our discussion there otherwise i will reveal its answer in the upcoming videos and i will share its link in the description section as well as in the i bar section you can go through it and now let us see our next challenge Now, friends, let us see our next challenge. And the next challenge is: we have the two clock inputs, clock zero and clock one. Both of them are going to the input of the multiplexer, and with the help of this multiplexer, we will be able to pass one of the clock, either clock zero or clock one. And output of the multiplexer is going to FDM zero and FDM one, similar to our challenge one. but with respect to challenge 1 here is a difference and the difference is clock 0 is going to some part of the design directly similarly clock 1 is going to some part of the design directly friends in this design here exists a path a that means the flop that is operating at clock 0 is interacting with the flop which is working at output of the multiplexer FD0 is giving its output to this combination logic and out of this combination logic is going to FDM1 similarly here is this another path that is path B FD1 which is operating at clock 1 is giving its output to this combination logic and which is giving its output to FDM1 that means the flop that is working at clock 1 is giving its data to the flop which is working at multiplexer output Similarly just assume that here is exists a third path that is called C it is not shown here that means out of FD0 can be given to the input of FD1 and similarly there is another path which is out of FD1 goes to FD0 similarly other type of paths from FDM1 to FD0 is not shown here and path from fdm1 to fd1 is not shown here now the challenge here is to constrain all the clocks the input clocks clock 0 clock 1 and out of the multiplexer and with respect to challenge 1 how the constraints will be different that you have to tell me now you can pause my video here try to think of its answer if something comes to your mind please write it down in the comment section so that we can start a discussion there otherwise i will reveal a solution in the upcoming videos and i will give their links in the description section as well as in the i bar section you can go through them with this i am going to end this video and i hope that this would be quite informative for all of you i am sure these type of videos will help you to crack static timing analysis interviews if you also like this video please press the like button and you can share your feedback in the comment section and in future also we are going to get many such videos so to be aligned with our channel don't forget to subscribe it and press the bell icon to get the notification of all the upcoming videos thank you so much for watching and your time